Good morning, Keller Williams. Happy Monday. It is Pi Day. 314, baby. What are you doing to celebrate Pi Day? You doing some math? You eating pizza? Some cobbler, perhaps? Is cobbler pie or is that something different? I don't know. I think we think it's actually something different, isn't it? All right. <clears throat> so good morning. Hope you had a great weekend. Despite the bizarre weather we had on Saturday, I don't know if anyone else was kind of like, okay, really? Or, I thought we were done with this. However, I think we are now done. I think we're, we're set to rocket ship into the 60s and take the spring by storm. Hey, speaking of taking the spring by storm, let's have some conversations around all the listings you took this past weekend. Because some of you are out there getting crazy. If you remember, we have a challenge going on that from March the 1st through May the 1st, 61 days, we take how many listings? Ah, uh, you're all killing me. All right, somebody take a guess. Brett knows it. What is it, Brett? I'm saying 12. 12 listings each between now and now and then that would be that would work who's well, maybe, who's in for that maybe it was three <laughs> so the total is 400 listings right we need 400 listings between now and then as an organization 400 listings 12 a piece would work though i like where brett was going with that hell you know what Th three a piece would actually get us real close so almost either one so 400 listings, it means a little more than six a day. So here's where we are. After 13 days, right, because today is the 14th, which means we have, we only count through midnight of last night. So for the first 13 days, out of the 85 that we should have as of this morning, we're at 67. So there's, there's good news and, and less good news in all of that. We're, we're at 79% of where we should be we're shy by about 18 units as of this morning. Here's the good news though. We have picked up the pace from the first two months of the year by almost double because it took us 28 days from the first of the year to the 28th of January to get to the same point. And it's only taken us 13 days to get here in March. So the good news is you're doubling the pace. The less good news is we're still a little bit behind. So if you didn't take a new listing this weekend, you've got between now and Friday to take a new one, right? That's your task this week, go take a listing. And stop telling me they're not out there because I get on the MLS just like you do every day and guess what I see? I see listings. The question is, are they yours? That's the key. Get in front of people who need your services and win the listing. Before you can do that, you have to win the listing appointment. And that's all about relationships and talking to people. Relationships and talking to people. Are you in relationship and are you talking to people? So we've got to continue to drive our listings to make sure we hit that 400. When we hit that 400, your income goes up. You see how that works? Right, when we hit 400 as an organization, it's almost impossible for that not to touch every single one of you. So your income goes up. That's why I keep starting every week out with this conversation. Do I want your income to go up more than you do? There's a question. Ponder that a moment. Hmm. And regardless of what your answer is, here's my challenge to you. Prove it. If you're looking at your screen now saying, what a jerk. I can see some of you are doing that. What a jerk. Why would my income matter more to him than it does to me? Okay, well then prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Go take listings. I want nothing more than to be wrong about that. And here's my last thought about your listing opportunities. How many of you between J 
January 1st and today have contacted and spoken to, not emailed, spoken to your entire database. If you have not done that, you have not do dove in. I almost said dove in. You have not dived into the pond that is the deepest with listing opportunities. They're all sitting in your database. Pick up the phone, call your database. I had a coach who used to call it dialing for dollars. When you need business, pick up the phone and call your database and just dial for dollars. If you haven't done that, that's your task this week. If your database is big, that's your task this week, next week, and maybe the next week after that. But you've got to get through your database in order to make sure that you're able to service the people who need servicing. Remember, it's not their job to call you. It's your job to call them. And don't be naive enough to think that if somebody inside of your database needs to list their property, they're definitely calling you. I have lived in that, in that la-la land and have been disappointed over and over again. So choose not to live in that place. And if the people in your database don't need to list their property, what about the five people that they know who are the closest to them? You got to reach through your database to those people. Yes? Are we all good? All right, so let's keep driving that listing count. <clears throat> so that's challenge number one. Challenge number two, let me just put on the screen for you. As you know, we have been challenging ourselves, where is my book list? There we go. To read two books a week with your team leaders during their 30, 60, 90. And here is the updated, the last two weeks, because I think I didn't give you this last week. So last week we had The Gap and the Gain by Dan Sullivan and The Happiness Advantage by Sean Acor as the two books for last week. And this week we have Winning, Yes, with the number one as the first I, that's not a typo. Winning by Tim Grover and Radical Candor by Kim Scott. <clears throat> so jump on those. Uh, I will put the link to this in the chat so that you have it. If I can actually grab it. All right, I will grab that in, in a moment. Um, so keep, keep diving in with your, uh, with your knowledge acquisition by reading, 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 reading. Some calendar events before we get to our main topic today. Uh, today, uh, this week is another kind of crazy week. We've got a ton, ton of things going on. We have all of our normal things, our tech work with, with Joe. We have business builders with Debbie Orr. We have uh, our, our, our productivity coaching uh, events that, that go on every single day. Uh, today at 11 o'clock, we do have... Uh, our book club that meets, we are book clubbing the shift. Uh, we're on tactics uh, 789, I believe. I think 789, right? Whatever pages go along with that. So do join us at 11 o'clock. For next Monday, we will finish the shift book. And for those of you who are looking ahead, we are moving on then from the shift book immediately to Wealth Can't Wait. We will book club Wealth Can't Wait right after the shift book. So for those of you who want to get ahead, and start Wealth Can't Wait now. We're, we'll be meeting in two weeks to start Wealth Can't Wait, and I'll give you the pages for that next week. One o'clock today, we do have success through teams. For those of you who are interested in understanding what it looks like to join a team or to start a team, we have about a 45 minute or so session for you to kind of get the, the nuts and bolts of what that looks like. Do note that this is a required session for you. If you're looking to join a team or start a team, this is where you start. You come to this class first, then you have a conversation with your team leader. Then and only then do you start having conversations with either rainmakers or agents uh, and, start, and start building that team. But, but those, two, those two steps are really important for you to come to this class first. Uh, your team leaders, when you go to them and say, hey, I'd like to join a team or start a team, the first question they will ask you is, have you gone through success through teams? And if not, they'll push you back to that class, right? So those two steps are, uh, are the first two steps. <clears throat> Join us today at, at, uh, at 11. For Rainmakers on the call, as always, if you want to jump in at 11.45 to be on the call to introduce yourselves and let people know uh, who you may be looking for. If you're looking for anyone at this moment in time, we encourage you to do that. Immediately after that at two o'clock, 
uh, based on some requests from last week, uh, I'm going to do a special session that's really going to be a, an objection handling session for anyone who is wondering, all right, well, what if people say, no, I don't want this equity analysis? It came up as a part of the sign in to win because the equity analysis is one of the eligibility requirements to be able to win the prizes and the sign in to win this time. However, it's also kind of a conversation that you're all dealing with as you offer equity analyses out to your database. So come join us at two o'clock if you want to uh, work through some objection handlers uh, and, and think about that from a slightly different perspective. It's not about you doing something to people, it's about offering a service, right? And so we're gonna talk through the two different sides of that. And then tomorrow, if you remember last Wednesday, um, I got a little preachy about, uh, about buyer's agents and their, their ability or inability to, to win the deal, right? And we were talking about some opportunities that exist. And so a number of you asked if we could have a separate session on that. So I did build tomorrow at 11 o'clock it's called Win the Freaking Deal, only because everything else seemed inappropriate. So it is called Win the Freaking Deal. And it's not necessarily what we did the last couple of times we met about strategies for winning. These are, these are about some new ideas and some new thoughts about making sure that you are not just seen, but you get the win because I've got a lot more information from many of you that's coming in that will assist us in doing the things that need to get done to make sure that your buyers come out on top. So if you're frustrated, if you've lost a transaction, if you have great ideas, any and all of that, join us tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We're going to spend an hour and really work through making sure that your buyers come out on top. This is, just so you remember, this all was, was the, the root of this is that many of our top agents are losing deals, right? And so if, if, if you're a capper and above and you're losing deals, it's your information that's coming back to me, right? So, so, so this isn't about experience level. So my expectation is that there'll be 600 people on the call tomorrow at 11 o'clock because it affects every single one of us. D don't believe that you're immune from that just because you quote unquote know what you're doing. Remember in certain scenarios, experience can be a handicap. And we wanna make sure that your experience is not handicapping you and your buyers. So we'll see you tomorrow at 11 for win the freaking deal. All righty, I have two, uh, two things I left for you this morning and they're both really quick. <clears throat> the first is this, I want you to remember every day when you get up that this, this, this war that's going on in Eastern Europe um, affects you and your family more than you know, right? Because this is a business family and we have, we have two Ukrainians um, that I know about uh, in, inside of our family and they are Anna Helinski and Elena Semeldenko. And so make sure that you wake up every morning. Um, both Anna and Elena have family in the Ukraine. Um, Anna's family has, has fled to the West, uh, the west, west of U Ukraine. Uh, Elena's family is stuck in that besieged city in the Southeast in Mariupol. Um, both situations are, 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 are not good. Right, so please wake up every morning and recognize that um, that this is this is closer to you than it may seem. It's not just on the news. Um, it affects our family members who are who are worried and concerned about the safety of uh, of their family. So make sure that you're doing all that you can, sending sending whatever you can, whether that's prayers or thoughts or money or or whatever it is. There's it's so frustrating because it's so hard to know how to help, and I get that. <clears throat> but both both Anna and and <clears throat> excuse me and Elena um, will be uh, massively grateful for uh, for the emotional support that you can put behind them uh, to get them through this difficult time. So uh, please just remember that uh, Anna and Elena uh, every day need your assistance uh, during this craziness uh, that's going on in Eastern Europe. That being said, I wanted to just end today with a reminder, 
a reminder about referrals. Remember in the early days of the pandemic, two years ago, when uh, some restaurants who couldn't serve customers, they were going out and they were sort, they were buying like masks and gloves and, and alcohol, and they were setting up little stands in front of their restaurants to sell stuff. Well, they were doing that to try and get the gap in their income closed, right? Because they, they couldn't do one thing, so they pivoted and tried to do something else. And I, I recognized as I was doing my taxes last week uh, and looking at uh, the income into my household from referrals, I thought, well, you know, do we spend enough time really thinking about referrals as another source, a, a consistent source of income for ourselves? You know, we think about listings taken, we talk about our buyers. What about the referral side of things? Have you set a goal, a financial goal for how much you're going to earn in referrals each year? Right, the goal, the goal in my household is $25,000. $25,000 annually in referral income. I can tell you last year, as I was doing my taxes, we, we were way off on that. We, we got so sidetracked by the craziness in the market that we weren't paying attention to that. And here's what I know. I know that at least two or three transactions happened just inside of our own family that we missed. We were not able to kind of put ourselves in between there and, and grab a portion of some of that commission by being that referral agent. So who is it that you know? How, how are you educating the people in your world that you can be a resource to help them find great agents, not only nationwide, but around the world? The more you start to think about this, the more it starts to show up. I can tell you that we were in the elevator in Orlando uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we came down the elevator with somebody who said, you know, everyone wears their little badges. And they said, oh, you're in real estate? And they said, yes. I said, oh, I'm here for another conference. Hey, I'm curious. Do you know real estate agents in Raleigh, North Carolina? Like, well, as a matter of fact, yes. One of, a member of our team is, a, is an expert in, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Why do you ask? He said, well, I'm, I'm relocating from Andover, Massachusetts to Raleigh, North Carolina. So, well, would it be helpful if we put you in touch with this team member to assist you in buying a house? And he said, oh, you can do that? I said, yes, absolutely. He said, yeah, that'd be great. He said, and while we're at it, I'm, I'm curious, do you have a house to sell in Andover? And he said, I do, except it's done, which is why I'm now needing somebody in Raleigh kind of urgently. So got his name and information and quickly called Michelle Edwards, who uh, is somebody that I know in Raleigh, North Carolina, and referred that business to her. And so, so we'll make three or $4,000 when he closes on a property down there just by simply taking the elevator in Orlando and, and, and answering some questions because I was wearing something that referenced real estate, right? So, so here's my thought for you. Be on purpose about your referrals. Be on purpose about creating and finding those opportunities. First and foremost, set a goal. Set a really a clear goal about how you're going to, uh, how much money you will make via referral. Then make sure that you go to your database, your friends and family, and educate them on how that works. Educate them that anytime someone, either whether it's them or someone they know, is interested or looking for uh, a real estate professional, that you should be their first call. Ask, 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 ask. You don't get it if you don't ask for it, right? Create a referral network. Do you have agents around the country that you are in contact with who can and should be passing business back and forth, right? Are you pushing things out on social media, pushing yourself as the resource for any kind of relocating uh, opportunity? There's so many different ways to create that referral opportunity. I just want us to be thinking about it if in fact we feel like our income is, is in jeopardy with what's going on in the market, well, what, what if we decided to just add to it? Let's make sure that we're using every avenue that our license allows us to use to create additional income. I will leave you with this, and, and Gary's been telling us this for I don't know, two decades or more, 
There is a simple reality. If real estate agents mastered the science of the referral, companies like Zillow or Realtor.com, all those aggregator sites wouldn't exist. If we had done a better job keeping everybody inside of our world, aggregator sites wouldn't exist. We allowed that to happen. So now the question is, are you going to continue to allow it to happen? Or are you going to take control of your own database, take control of your own income, and make sure that you're putting yourself in the path of those opportunities and referring and referring and referring and referring and referring? I hope that's helpful, gives you something to think about today, because I know nobody had anything else to think about except that today. However, I want you to jump on and make sure that, that you're, you're focused on that as an income source and then take some actions towards seeing that through. Have a spectacular day today. We'll see you throughout the day. And of course, if not, we'll see you tomorrow at nine o'clock. Have a great day, guys.